I'm going to convene the uh, November 19th, 2020 council meeting. If everybody would stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance and then remain standing for a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody. Welcome. Uh, agenda item here, we have a review of the minutes from past meetings. I've got November 5th, 2020 meeting minutes. Are there any comments or suggestions? Uh, one minor uh, correction. I mentioned it already to Carolyn. It's all the way on the back page uh, where I talked about looking into a rack for kayaks. It was not just the residents at Symphony Village. It was residents of the whole town of Centerville. I, it was Symphony Village, yes, but as I was walking around town, other people also mentioned it. So if we change it to residents of the town? Yes, like a, okay. that'll be fine. All right, motion to approve. There's a second? Second. We have a motion and a second to approve amended minutes for November 5th, 2020. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Uh, we have a closed session statement that I will read. Closed session announcement regarding town council closed session. November 19th, 2020, the town council met in closed session on Thursday, November 19th, 2020 at six o'clock p.m. at the Liberty Building 107 North Liberty Street, second floor meeting room to discuss personnel in accordance with the Maryland Open Meetings Act. All four members of the town council or four, excuse me, four members of the town council voted to close the session. The authority to close the session is found in section 3-305 of the general provisions article. Town council discussed the following topics. Personnel, we interviewed candidates for board commission, board slash commission positions, actions, no actions. The following members and staff were present. Timothy E. McCluskey, president, Steve Klein, vice president, Robert R. Hardy, Jr. and Shelby Anania. Anania. Anania, I apologize, Anania, Anania. Yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> members, Steve Walls, town manager and candidates for board slash commission positions. The meeting adjourned at 6.40 p.m. Uh, I did also want to just let everybody know that uh, uh, council member Keel is not here this evening. He's recovering from surgery, so we all will miss him and wish him well. Next, we have Citizens Forum. Uh, we would give an opportunity. Do we have any emails that have come in, uh, Carolyn? No. Okay. And is there anybody is signed, not signed up? Um, would you read the statement if you have it? Sure. Welcome to this meeting of the Centerville Town Council. This is a public meeting and we welcome your participation. By attending, you acknowledge that this session is recorded and aired live on QAC TV 7. During the meeting, we ask that you turn your cell phones off and hold personal conversations outside the meeting room. The scheduled agenda is available on the information table just outside. Public comment will be limited to three minutes per person. The town council respects and appreciates your desire and right to convey your message freely. And in keeping with the dignity of proceedings, we ask that all views be expressed in a respectful and civil manner. Comments longer than three minutes should be submitted in writing. If questions are a part of your comments, we'll refer those to the appropriate individual. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any public that uh, wishes to, to speak? All right, hearing none, we're gonna move on to appearances. Uh, item A under appearances is board and commission appointments. We had a few interviews. Do we have any discussion on that? Anybody want to make a motion to uh, appoint? Make a motion that uh, the three candidates that we interviewed tonight be all be all nominated and accepted as um, to the Parks Advisory Board. All right, so we've got Fred McNeil who interviewed this evening, Gene McGarry and Ryan Holdgreave. These would be remainders of a three-year term on the Parks Advisory Board. Uh, do we have a second on that motion? Second. Okay. Uh, we have a motion and a second to, to appoint Fred McNeil, Gene McGarry and Ryan Holdgreave to the remainder of a three-year term each on the Parks Advisory Board. Is there any further discussion? I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the ayes have it. So we do have, do you, is Gene out there? Does anybody know if Gene, if Gene is out there? All right. So uh, what we'd like to do is while we've got you guys here, I'd like to uh, see if we could swear you all in and uh, do our best to get a photo op. So um, if you would, if you guys would kind of gather up here six feet apart and, uh, and, and we'll, we'll do the oath and then maybe we can get a photo. 
Not, not you yet. Just the park board first. <laughs> but they haven't made the motion yet. All right, so here's how this is going to go. I'm going to read it slowly, and each of you are going to say the same thing, but in the beginning, you're going to raise your right hand, you're going to I'll pronounce your name, and, uh, and then you're going to kind of uh, follow me forward, okay? Please raise your right hand, say I, pronounce your name in full, and repeat after me. Do solemnly affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States and that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the state of Maryland and support the Constitution and laws thereof and support the Constitution and laws thereof. And that I will, and I will, to the best of my skill and judgment, and the best of my skill and judgment, diligently and faithfully, diligently and faithfully, without partiality or prejudice, without partiality or prejudice, execute the office of, execute the office of, member of the town of Centerville, member of the town of Centerville, park advisory board, park advisory board, for a three-year term, for a three-year term, expiring April 2022. April According to the Constitution, to the Constitution and, laws and laws of this state, the town charter, the town charter and, laws and laws and ordinances of the town of Centerville. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we're going to have each of you guys sign. And then if you can, like if you guys can stay six feet apart up there and maybe the council can gather behind and, and we can take a photo of everyone. Yeah, let's, let's do the photo first, I guess. Does that work? Yeah. Normally we'd get kind of chummy here, but I, we're not a normal time. put the rose in the middle. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're good? All right. So while everybody is signing, I, I just want to kind of say a little bit about each one of these individuals. Gene McGarry has worked for, currently lives here in town, uh, has, has worked for uh, Callahan's Gas for a long time. He's a soccer, uh, soccer ref, uh, and, and he's had kids who have con gone up and, and grown up through the system. Fred McNeil has lived here for about 40 years. He's been extremely active. He most recently was uh, a candidate for the town council. And Ryan Holgreave uh, is growing up here in town. He's on his way to become an Eagle Scout. And, and he, a couple of years ago during one of the council forums, had stood up and, and said that the, the youth need to get more involved. So I'm really proud that we've got all three individuals that are going to be participating. And Shelby, I think you had something to kind of talk them about with their first opportunity to volunteer this weekend, right? Yes, I want to let all of you guys know that the Parks Board um, every year gets together to help decorate the town for Christmas. And this Sunday, we are gathering at Town Square, at Town Hall, um, at noon um, to start decorating and putting up lights at Town Hall. So if you guys can, please come out at noon on the 22nd um, to help the rest of the Parks Board with decorating. Bring your family as well. Any, any friends, any family, <laughs> all are welcome. All hands. Thank you all. Day. Thanks so much. Thank I appreciate you. it. Thank you guys. All right, under, uh, still under board and commission appointments, um, we have uh, Mr. Fred Bew has uh, served as an alternate on the, on the Board of Appeals. Uh, do we want to consider Fred as a full member of the Board of Zoning Appeals? Do we have a motion for that? We do. I'd like to make a motion to make uh, Mr. Bew a, a full-time member of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Perfect. I second it. Uh, we have a motion and a second to appoint Fred Bew as a regular member of the Zoning Appeals Board. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. You know the drill. Let's do the same thing if we can. Been here before. But... <laughs> Thank you. Please raise your right hand, say aye, pronounce your name in full, and repeat after me. Aye, Reverend Bew. You solemnly affirm. You solemnly affirm. That I will support. The Constitution of the United States, and that I will be faithful, I will be faithful. and bear true allegiance bear true allegiance in the state of Maryland, the state of Maryland. and support the Constitution and laws thereof, and that I will, 
To the best of my skill and judgment. To the best of my skill and judgment. Diligently and faithfully. Diligently and faithfully. Without partiality or prejudice. Without partiality or prejudice. Execute the office of. Execute the office of. Member of the town of Centerville. Member of the town of Centerville. Board of Zoning Appeals. Board of Zoning Appeals. Expiring on April 2023. Expiring on April 2023. Uh, according to the Constitution. According to the Constitution. And laws of this state. The, the town charter, town charter, and laws and ordinances, laws and ordinances of the town of Centerville. Thank you for being with us, sir. Uh, can we do a photo again? Maybe you stand there and we'll all get behind you. Thank you. So just a couple of quick things about Fred. Fred, you've lived here for about five, six years now, I think, right? Uh, uh, six, years. six years now, you and your wife Fern bought the Wharf House down, uh, down by the Wharf, one of the oldest houses here in town. Uh, Fred is an amateur, he's a retired executive, but an amateur woodworker. Oh. This guy can build anything. I mean, it's really amazing some of the things that he's built. What's that? You should see the day one building right now. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, <laughs> and so thank you for, for being willing to step up and uh, be a full member of the Board of Appeals. All right, moving on, we're going to have the YMCA update. We've got Robbie Gill, I think, is outside whenever he wants to come in. How are you this evening? Very well, Robbie. Thanks for, uh, for coming in. Derek, you want to sit up there as well? If you guys could just introduce yourself for the records and then uh, yeah. the floor is yours. Oh, great. Thank you. So my name is Robbie Gill. I'm the CEO for the YMCA of the Chesapeake, and I appreciate uh, you having us out tonight. I have with me Derek White, who's one of our group execs and supporting this project. So as you guys know, uh, we've been working on this one for quite a while, and our history within Queen Anne's County goes uh, back um, original conversation 16 years ago, and then we worked and partnered with the county to keep the pool open at Chesapeake College. And, and then when that closed, we knew there was a need, obviously, to have a facility in the community. And the county purchased the land here in town and that became a site that potentially could work. And so we did a feasibility study in two th way back in 2011 that showed the YMCA would be extremely successful. We opened a facility in town in 2015, uh, which was the same year the land was donated uh, to the YMCA. And, what, and while it's been a process and taken us some time to get there, the positive has been the project itself has expanded in scope and impact. So if we would have built this Y six, seven years ago, it wouldn't also be a senior center, nor have this small business development support piece as a part of it. So I think now that we're at the point where we're gonna break ground on this facility, uh, in hopefully the late spring of 2021, the impact it's gonna have is substantially greater uh, because of the, the time that it's taken to get to this point and the number of partners um, that have come along. And I would just say uh, thank you to you guys for supporting uh, this effort, uh, specifically with the letter of support to the governor's capital budget. I greatly appreciate that. We were fortunate enough to receive funds from the capital budget, uh, Governor Hogan's capital budget for our YMCA in St. Michael's, and we're hopeful the same will happen. So your letter of support will go a long way, so I appreciate that. It working so yep you know the, the YMCA is a not-for-profit 501c3 we've been on the eastern shore since 1857 so we're not going anywhere I've uh, been around for a long time we serve uh, over 40,000 people across the eastern shore of Maryland uh, from as far northern uh, to the northern point of Cecil County all the way down to Accomack County Virginia the YMCA turns no one away due to any financial limitations and provides financial assistance to ensure everyone has the opportunity to participate. So this new YMCA here in Centerville will at least be a place where everyone is welcome, which is part of our mission. Very involved in youth development work. And so across the Eastern Shore, you'll see the YMCA involved in summer camps and swim lessons. We do a ton of work in partnership with the school systems where we actually provide swim lessons as a part of PE <coughs> curriculum as we do for every fifth grader in Wacomico County. 
So we're excited that the, the site is located close to schools. So that gives us a great opportunity to partner and collaborate. We run early learning programming and youth sports. And basically the YMCA is going to um, continue to look at how we can partner and collaborate, fill gaps and needs that aren't really being met, and to make an impact in the community. Uh, so over 60 million Americans are pre-diabetic. Uh, there's a ton of work that needs to be done around being healthier. Uh, the YMCA is very involved in that work as well as uh, programs and services for seniors. Uh, and with this being a senior center, you're going to see cancer survivor programming, balance and stability classes, programming for Parkinson's, folks who have Parkinson's. So the YMCA, um, in partnership with the county, will be providing a ton of programming to support the health and well-being of, of our community. And um, the beauty of the YMCA is if you've seen one Y, you've seen one Y. So you could go down to Easton and see we built, have a boat building program there for high school students. It's unique to just that, that Y um, because of a specific need. And then you could go all the way down to Accomack County uh, and Kegatank Elementary. We run a chess, outreach chess programming for a community at Kegatink Elementary where the average household income there is $11,000 a year. And so for those kids, getting fed and learning chess is teaching us not only a skill in a game, but more importantly around patience and your next move. And if you're in a situation where you're just trying to get through the day, the last thing you're thinking about is how do I plan for the future? And so um, the work that we do in this county will have still be some similarities to other communities, but there'll be some very unique components too, like this will be our second YMCA that has a senior center in it and our first YMCA that has a space really designated to support youth in fiscal literacy uh, as well as um, supporting other local not-for-profits and small businesses who could use support and services as well. We partner and collaborate in so many different ways um, and so I mentioned a little bit about the Learn to Swim program. Uh, we also partner with um, hospital systems throughout the shore around our chronic disease programming as well and so um, as the YMCA has this facility in the community it's going to provide physical resources that can provide opportunities for partnerships and collaborations to make a bigger impact. So the YMCA uh, uh, from a facility standpoint is uh, substantial. Uh, it's a uh, has a six lane uh, pool but it also is a pool that's designed to where we can do swim lessons. It's got a shallow entry point as well. It'll have a wellness center and a full gymnasium, multi-purpose spaces, uh, a senior center offices, a kitchen that'll be used for heating and cooling for congregate meals for seniors, and then office spaces and conference rooms for the small, and we're calling it small business development center, but right now, but it's really, a, the strategy in that is, is number one, providing opportunities for our youth to um, be a part of a program to learn fiscal literacy. I always joke my, um, my um, son is a kid who's like, well, my debit card says I had 50 bucks on it, but you know, he spent that money three days ago kind of thing. <laughs> so logistically, how do we educate uh, our kids to where they're, um, from a fiscal standpoint, they're more knowledgeable and understanding what that looks like. But then also, if you have not-for-profits that need, let's just say in the COVID world we're dealing with now, a lot of people, you're trying to learn and get as much information as you can. So that space is a community resource to be able to support businesses as we navigate things like this and even post covid trying to navigate what the world looks like with that so it's going to be wonderful to have that we estimate the project to be right around 14 million uh, currently we've raised just over 10 million in commitments you know the why um, the ymca is going to give a safe place for kids to be after school uh, it's going to be a hub for senior programming in the morning. Um, you know, I always say no one goes to the Y and says, I missed you, treadmill number seven. It's not really how it works. Everyone's connected to each other, right? It's a, it's a community. And I really believe, having spent a fair amount of time in this county over the years, the Y will be really, in my opinion, that one of the first places that creates a place where everyone in the county comes together. You have just three distinct communities in the county. Uh, the Y is going to create a space where you'll see everyone from the island to north part of the county to the center of the county all come into one space and for programs and services, which will be exciting. These are just some renderings um, as we work on just some preliminary schematics. We're scheduled to go before we're planning and zoning, uh, working on that for December and December, I believe, the 17th. 
Um, working with Becker Morgan is our architect. Uh, we haven't chosen a general, um, general contractor yet, but should do that before uh, mid-December. Uh, the, the design is really three, um, it's three pre-engineered buildings and then the kind of the meat of the building itself will be all um, traditional construction. There's the pool. And uh, Tim's been kind enough to um, sit in on some of our meetings and we actually had a really nice virtual kind of tour of the wine. I will, once I've asked uh, Becker Morgan to provide that to us, um, to where we can share it. Once I have that, I'll share it so you can have that for the council to view. Ravi, is that uh, is the pool, the indoor pool, is that big enough to hold like meets and have a uh, uh, absolutely competitive uh, swimming? Have a on here. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yep. So just uh, let me get my bearings. So this is the entry point over here. The way this is designed, if um, to your point, if you are having a swim meet, you can actually enter here and go straight into the pool area. You can see all the bleachers that are here. So you can host swim meets there, which will be great. But you also have the shallow area. So this um, shaded area is all three and a half feet. And there's a shallow entrance point here. So if we're teaching kids to swim, providing uh, classes for seniors, you've got the capacity to do that. When you walk into the Y here, you can see in the senior center, you can see the desk here. Turning right into here are these conference rooms and offices for the small business development area. This area is called stay and play, and that's for families who have kids that, let's say I've got a kid who's participating in a swim meet, but I've also got a six-year-old that I'd love to be able to put somewhere so I can pay attention to my older kid. So they would go in there, um, and they have all kinds of activities. This is uh, office spaces here, the senior center office is there, wellness center here. You come down, you've got some consultation and meeting spaces. This is the commercial, uh, it's not a commercial kitchen, it's a warming and heating kitchen. So in talking with the county, um, they're gonna have meals brought in. And so they'll already be prepared, but you need a place to heat them and cool them and prepare, uh, prepare them for service. So that'll go here. You've got another conference room here as well. And then three multi-purpose rooms that can be used for a variety of programs. There's a kitchen here or like a sink so if you're doing like a, let's say it was a pottery class or something like that, you've got capacity to do that on the end, and there's a hallway there. And then when you go down this stretch here, it goes to a full-size gymnasium. There's the gymnasium there. And it's a full-size gym, so pickleball has become huge on the shore, so this facility will be a good hub for that. And so we'll be able to fit three courts on there, as well as volleyball and basketball. So you, we mentioned our goal, so um, we're going to be around 14 million. Uh, we've been blessed with some incredible gifts, and so um, we're just over 10 now. We'll launch the community phase of our campaign at the end of January, early February. And so you'll hear a whole lot more about that as we work on finishing the campaign uh, with the goal of breaking ground in the, in the late spring. And construction's about an 18 month time period. Those are all the wild locations across the eastern shore of Maryland and Virginia. Uh, and as I mentioned, you know, the Y serves over 40,000 people. We've provided over $2 million in financial assistance. Roughly a quarter of our members receive assistance in some capacity and others to make sure they're one step away. Can you get just a little bit closer to, to your mic and roll it over a little bit? Yeah, sure. Yep. Uh, as, a, as a charity, we're governed by a board of volunteers. We have 20 board members, um, corporate board members that serve. They live up and down the Eastern Shore. And then each of our YMCAs uh, have a local board, and that local board is uh, chartered with making sure the local YMCA is meeting specific local community needs. And that's Great. really kind of it. So um, it's been a long time coming, and we still got you know some heavy lifting to do, but we're almost there. So it's uh, there's a lot to be said for patience and persistence, and I deeply believe if you're if you're focused on trying to do the right thing and make a difference uh, in the lives of those that you're called to serve, that ultimately that uh, it'll happen, right? And so we're we've been blessed and um, getting close, and we appreciate your support. And I think it's going to be just an incredible um, 
community resource for the town of Centerville that uh, we'll be able to celebrate for the next hundred years. I agree. Uh, council members, do you have anything, uh, any questions, any comments? I do. Uh, there's the Kennard African American Cultural Center Museum. Do you have, you, I assume you've interacted with them already and is there gonna be a coordination and agreement to bring those, your facility and that wonderful facility down here in the town of Centerville? Sure. Uh, we haven't had any direct conversations with them about what that would look like, but we definitely will do that. And you see within our other communities where the YSRs, we partner and collaborate to provide um, support to other charities and not-for-profits. Yes, yeah, so that, that is an excellent facility that the community uh, uh, rehabbed that building and they have uh, after school, pro before the pandemic, they were doing after school program, they have conference rooms. And I, I've participated in a few events there. So I was just That's wonderful. interested. That is a very good asset here in the town that I hope yeah, for can sure. be Thank utilized you. to its maximum to work in partnership. Without a doubt, without a doubt. Thank you for sharing that. We'll absolutely reach out to them. Yes. Um, oh, well, oh. If I, like if, I, if I may, just to help um, with answer that, if you think of Easton, for example, there's the uh, Building African Americans Mind Program. Uh, they have a beautiful facility that they just built. There's Chesapeake Multicultural Resource Center, and we work directly with those two agencies. Although they have their own facilities, those groups come in and uh, receive swim lessons at the YMCA. We provide transportation to and from after school programs as needed. Uh, we get those kids registered for youth sports programs. And so there's a variety of ways that we can integrate uh, the Canar program into what we're doing. I mean, that is, uh, I was very happy, and you talk about nearness of schools. We got the high school, the middle school, we got Canard Elementary. Um, even from the, I'll say the west side of town, we have Centerville Elementary, and I'm looking forward to uh, you guys breaking ground and really serving our youth. It, We're excited, it, thank you. It, well, let me just tell you, I think the community is excited, if not just the families, but I live in Symphony Village. Oh, great. And uh, there's a buzz. Okay. Wonderful. Shelby, did you have any comments or questions? Um, no questions. I'm very excited for you guys to break ground. I think this is going to be such an asset to the town and then the county, really. Yeah, it's it's um, you know, something this substantial takes takes a lot of a lot of heavy lifting, a lot of people plugging away at it, and um, a lot of blessings. So um, <laughs> we've slowly been checking those boxes and um, excited to be at the point where we're almost there. So thank you. Yeah, of course. Steve? I, I just wanted to say I'm you know so excited as well I've followed this for a long time I have to say the persistence that you guys have and it's not just here in Queen Anne's County because I know you've had it, it challenges in other places as well and I know that I've participated on some calls where it was very close to going away and I'm just so glad that that you stuck through it and and oh my gosh the generosity of some of these donors is fantastic Amazing. Yeah. and uh, I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it to me you know I moved here from Colorado and, and I was just amazed when I moved here that there wasn't a pool here in Queen Anne's County, that was a public pool where kids can learn to swim, you know, here on the Eastern Shore, right? I mean, we've got water, we're surrounded by water. And so I'm just so happy that, that there's gonna be an indoor pool. And I believe you also have plans for an outdoor pool as well. And yes, I just think that's so big, that, that's, that's just great. So thank you guys for coming in. We're looking forward to having you at the Planning Commission next month as well. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yep. Thank you. All right, moving on, we're going to go to Centerville Economic Development Authority, Nick Rowden, Chair, and Paige Tillman, Economic Development Manager. All right, another presentation. I'm loving these PowerPoints. <laughs> <laughs> what a great act to follow. Thank yeah. you for having us. <laughs> Ours isn't quite as exciting as theirs, but... <laughs> Even Paige. Probably no more than I do that. Oh, shit. Did you turn it off? I did hit that button. Sorry, y'all. Got anything you want to do with the screen? No presentation? Yeah, we just accidentally turned the computer off. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> just oh, take a man. moment. Give us a break, right? How you doing, Nick? Doing well. How are you? I'm fine. You getting ready for the holiday season? It's come upon us, right? It is. Every time I turn around, it's something new. We'll send Carol in over next time. <laughs> <laughs> Accidentally slid off the escape route. Okay.
Okay, there we go. All right, the meeting is yours. All right, so uh, you know, first of all, thank you all for having us here so we can talk a little bit about, um, about CETA, the Centerville Economic Development Authority and what it is that we do. Um, the, uh, you know, a little background uh, created in 2013 by a town ordinance that essentially uh, amended the town charter. Um, and so the language out of there, the, to impact the quality of life and economic health of the town of Centerville, as it is directly linked to the viability of the commercial sector with the associated tax base and to act in an advisory capacity to the town council. Um, the one thing I want you to take out of that is the advisory capacity. Um, because if you notice the next line, we don't maintain a budget. Uh, we have no decision-making authority on behalf of the town. Our job is to come here and advise. Um, and we do that based off of what you ask us to advise on. Um, and we'll talk a little more about that later. So uh, we do work in conjunction with the town economic development major, uh, manager, Paige, and we do that to advise you on economic development matters that impact the health of the community. Um, our board, and I apologize because I built this off of the wrong list, um, the, it has nine members, uh, each with a three-year rotating, uh, rotating term uh, appointed by the council. Um, the first one, the Main Street Manager, is no longer a voting member. That is an at-large position at this point, and that can be a resident or non-resident. Um, however, Carol does still participate in the meetings and is an integral part of this, uh, of this authority. Uh, there is one representative from Centerville Alive or a like organization, that's Will Helmsley. Uh, one representative from the banking or finance sector. Um, a representative from the business park or commercial real estate. Three at, uh, residents at large and then two town-based business owners uh, or operators and they may or may not be residents. Um, the thing to note here is that we have, we have had some issues with attendance and with getting to a quorum. Um, and that makes it really, really tough when we can't, you know, even get to the basis where we can start to approve minutes and things of that sort. And, you know, there are, um, you know, everybody on, on there at one point in time or another has been really instrumental in the things that we've gotten done. Um, but if it's getting to a point where we can't get to a quorum, then we can't get anything done. And so, the, you know, the council does have the ability, uh, if that continues to become a problem, to either um, remove or replace members as needed. Uh, we also have that one at-large position, I believe, it's the at-large that's, that's vacant, is vacant right now. Uh, and so we're accepting applications for anybody who would like to <laughs> come out and be part of that. Um, promise we're a fun group. <laughs> so our meetings, uh, we meet formally every other month on the third Tuesday at 6 p.m. Also open to town council, who we love to have. Um, we, those meetings include uh, status updates from the economic development manager and the Main Street manager, uh, typically attended by at least one council member and a representative from uh, the Queen Anne County uh, Economic Development and Tourism Department. They've been really good about coming to our meetings and, and um, being a part of uh, at least the discussion. Um, so on our off months, uh, something that we, we started in January and it worked great. Um, you know, Paige presented a really informative look at the town from a cultural and economic and um, uh, educational standpoint with some other demographics. And it, you know, that education piece really helped inform a discussion. But we had these working sessions. And you know, I, I can't say enough about how well the first one went and that we would love to continue to do those. And we plan on continuing to do those. And so there's also a huge opportunity to come to those. and, and those are open to, you know, be less formal and less of a readout and more of an actual let's, you know, let's put some stuff on a whiteboard and get some stuff done. Um, so our previous activities, uh, Centerville Live, which was a very ambitious marketing project, and I think you guys have seen a lot of the videos that were posted online, things of that sort, uh, that uh, was um, aimed in promoting the local business community and the in promoting doing business in Centerville. Um, unfortunately, the budgets for the website development and the updating not approved due to, due to COVID and the restrictions that we have right now. Um, but once we get past that, the videos are still relevant. And so we'll post an update as, uh, as it becomes available. There are a couple of pending economic development projects in Centerville, uh, 38,000 square foot commercial flex space in the business park. Uh, that I believe he's trying to bring there. There's the 41,000 square foot facility that you heard about five minutes ago, um, which we're super excited about. Um, and there remains a, 
a fair amount of existing commercial space that, that we can um, advertise and uh, try and fill. So I really have to point out, um, there are a couple of, of people who go, what I would say is above and beyond. Um, and I would encourage you to go and talk to them about the things that they're doing. Uh, Mary Margaret is one of them, her work with the Women's Museum, her work on the history of Centerville and those things. She has, is a wealth of knowledge and really does a ton of things, not just with CETA, but outside of that, that, that helps promote economic development. Uh, and Carol in her Main Street program and the activities such as Drink Maryland and things of that sort that bring people into the town. Um, you know, one of the things that we'll get to in a second is that, you know, growing that tax base is tough because you have, you know, everybody has a want. Um, you know, one of the wants that was brought to us is, you know, they want a Wegmans. <laughs> yes, but nobody wants the population to support the Wegmans. <laughs> um, you know, tourism is one of those things that, that brings people in and it brings money in and it, it doesn't affect our infrastructure um, as much as raising a bunch of you know, new houses or bringing in hotels or something of that sort. So even like the, the small events, the Drink Maryland and that type of thing are a huge deal and um, really goes a long way to promote Centerville versus people just driving right by on their way to Chestertown or to somewhere else. Um, and the last one is this, the facade grants and I did not give you enough credit on that. Um, I know that you spend a lot of time helping fill out those things. Um, they're, you know, when we look at downtown and we look at that area that we wanna have revitalized, things like those grants that, that help these businesses, you know, essentially pay to to put a new face uh, really go a long way. So our current activities, um, right now it's really the review of the, well, I would say the review of the economic development plan, um, but there is no budget allocated, so there's uh, not a lot of plan. We're in an investigative uh, state right now. And so we're continuing to work with the economic development manager. Uh, we're looking at that marketing awareness program, providing resources to the business community that we can uh, to try and get the rest of the way through what we hope is going to be an ending um, COVID problem. And then uh, working, you know, being available to the council and working with the planning commission through the comprehensive plan. And a lot of what they're doing in that comprehensive plan will drive what we can do for economic development. If they need to make changes to zoning and things of that sort, now is the time to do that based off of what you all as a council want to see. And that's the, you know, the thing that we're really looking forward to is, is getting that vision from you all and what, you know, what our path looks like. You know, we're, we're willing to go and look into those things, but we have to know what the path of the town is and, and that comes from you all. Um, so as you give us your vision, we'll then go and, and come back and say, hey, this is what we can and this is what we can't do to, or what we have to do to change in order to get there. And uh, I believe that's it for the presentation. And the one, I guess my last point is that the presentation really doesn't do, uh, do justice to all of those intricacies. There are a lot of things that play in and it's, um, you know, it's, it's working with the town manager on what the infrastructure will handle. You know, again, there's a lot of wants and a lot of things that people would like to see. And I think that, you know, as you give us direction, we'll be able to come back and tell you what it's gonna take to actually make those things be a reality. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm excited that we've got now uh, new council members with some new energy. And I think that uh, there's been some floundering of, of CETA, right? I mean, the fact that you have, have struggled to get a quorum, COVID aside, right? I mean, you, you struggled to get a quorum uh, is concerning, right? And, and I think that it's imperative for the council to provide you with direction and say, go do this, right? Uh, so I'm, I'm hopeful that over the next several months, We'll be able to do that, right? And 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 what do we want to be? What what do we want CETA to, to, to be? And what's you know what's that marching order? Um, I'm I'm hopeful that the budgets will open up again as well, and that that I believe that uh, investment in economic development is a long-term strategy. Uh, you know, and, and if you just look at the downtown, you you mentioned the facade grants, right? I mean, those buildings just look fantastic, right? We've given away so much money, and it and it really shows, right? And uh, if you were to take a picture ten years ago, what the Main Street looked like, and now, I mean, it, it's a total different story. And uh, you know, if we could get those videos up there, I mean, that's that's going to showcase some really cool stuff too. So, I'm hopeful that once COVID is over, uh, we could figure it all out and and fill the board up and get some direction. Council members, have any other comments? Thank you. Uh, I was a, uh, on our website. There is a. Uh, report uh, from 2015. Uh, I started uh, reviewing it. Uh, I would like to discuss with you uh, what you thought of that, 
where do you see using that as a possible launching point and a basis because uh, that wasn't just some devil may care plan. If taxpayers' money were used, and uh, I would hope that uh, CETA would, uh, I hope, have already reviewed it. I know from my viewpoint, uh, I saw a lot of uh, interesting items in there that uh, I would like to peruse and pursue with you. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was, yeah, we see that, that did it. Plan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was the one that yeah. Did it. yeah, and then there is also the complementary marketing implementation plan and analysis, which some people might say, oh, "This is boring." No, my brain was just you. Well, we'll meet, Nick, and I appreciate you presenting, and I'm looking forward to the coming year. Anybody else? I just want to say thank you guys. Thank you both for coming and doing the presentation. It was very informative, and I look forward to working with you guys. Likewise, thank you. The only other thing I wanted to add is, is and I know that we've had these discussions during the CETA meetings, is for either your members or you as a group to be advocates for legislation that's going to help promote economic development, right? We've got one that's going to be coming up here over the next couple of months dealing with allowing the museums, right? And it would be really great for. Uh, either the group or you as individuals to testify on, on behalf of why it's a, why it's a good thing. So I'm um, hopeful that can, you know, you could do that as well. And if you could do us a favor, if, if we do have the opportunity to maybe put some different people on, on the uh, council, on CETA, you know, as you go out in the community and have ideas about who might, who might do a good job there, let us know. Because if we're sitting around waiting for people to apply of their own accord, <laughs> we could be waiting for a while. So. I know I'm doing that, asking people to get involved. And we'd love to have you do it, too. Absolutely. And, and one of the good things, one of the unique things about CETA is it's one of the only boards that allows non-residents to be a part of it. So, uh, you know, we can pull from a greater community. All right. Okay, hey, Nick, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're going to move on to new business now. We've got uh, item A, a Centerville Wharf Boardwalk Timber Replacement bid consideration. Kip, is that going to be you? Okay. And now I recognize you, Kip. <laughs> did you yesterday, did you? Well, it looked good, <laughs> unfortunately, yeah. but yes. Um, do you have before you uh, information on it? Uh, we prepared a, uh, a bid package and put out invitations for bids for replacing the, the wharf decking. Uh, Bids were prepared, you see before you the, the way that the bids came in. Um, they range from 900, uh, I mean, nine, $99,940 down to $19,749.56. Um, normally with a broad span like that, it would be alarming and we'd look very close to it. Uh, the thing is that the, the low bid of the 19000 and some dollars is actually a contractor that we've worked with before. He's redecked both of the um, observation decks that are on the Millstream Trail uh, to the, down to the wharf. Uh, he's also redecked and worked on the bridge, I believe, on that trail as well. So we know him well, we trust his work, he does good work, trust his materials and stuff. Therefore, we're uh, asking that we award him the bid to take care of replacing it. This is being paid by a grant. <laughs> Carolyn works very hard on, with Mike Whitehill and the rest of our staff to get us lots of grant money for work like this. So, uh I had the opportunity today with the good weather, I walked about uh, down to Goose Landing from the beginning of the trail. Looked very excellent shape. Is, and so uh, are those bridges and uh, are they being replaced or are there? No, I, they, missed, I missed some further down the trail. No, that, and this is for the decking down at the wharf itself, the decking at the uh, oh, oh, okay. boat docks. All right, you mentioned. Right there at the wharf okay. park. Yeah, those have all been replaced, and and uh, Living Ecosystems, the one that we're uh, asking for approval to award this bid to, uh, is the 
contractor that took care of redecking and I mean and it, it, it was an excellent it looked really good oh yes that excellent work uh, yeah and uh, no and uh, a shout out to you and your crew uh, I met a couple of people on the trail they said that uh, I asked how did how does it look and they said oh it looks great <laughs> and uh, their one comment was is that yeah there was the hurricane that came through and oh yeah, it took them a couple of days, but their comment was, well, they had other things to take care of that were more important. <laughs> so the people that use the trail are a very appreciative um, hearing of what you guys do. So a shout out to you and your crew. Thank you, I'll pass it on. Yeah, this is, uh, it's so needed, right? It's hard to imagine that. I think that, that uh, the boardwalk is what now, nine years old or so, and it's, it's actually 10 oh, years yeah, old, starting yeah. to fail in a couple of places. And right. we've, done, we've been so fortunate with all of the grants that we've received over the years to, to build that whole park out. Uh, this is just going to make it look, look fantastic. And, and I, I remember watching these guys as they were redoing the other ones, and they, they do do uh, good work. I'm, I'm, I'm in full support. Mm -hmm. Uh, any of you guys have any other comments? Is there any lifespan difference in these proposals? I mean, do we anticipate having to replace? One, one difference between the way the original decking was put down and this, um, this decking will be put down with stainless steel screws. So you can back the screws back out and replace a board at a time. There's times that you can actually take it out, turn the board over and get some more use out of it. The problem is the original decking is put down with pole barn nails that are kind of a nail that twists and locks in. You would tear the board, boards up trying to get them out to turn them over or replace, mm -hmm. you know, even if you went to replace one at a time, part of the time it's so hard that you're gonna wind up replacing several boards instead of just one. So that one of the things that was included in the uh, bid package was to use the screws for that reason. But all, but all of these bids have kind of the same expected lifespan of the project. That it, they were all specced with the same, uh, the same materials, and, materials okay. and everything. So, um, yep. When do you anticipate they'll be able to get started if it's uh, awarded? That part I don't know. Okay. Uh, I, I can't tell you that whether he would start, you know, now and try and finish it through the winter months or okay uh i don't know what the lag time is on ordering the materials i can tell you that salt treated materials for quite a while through this summer and everything because of the pandemic the production was so low they weren't readily available right so okay. uh with that being said i i can't speak for the contractor to know how long it's going to take them to get materials okay Shelby, do you have anything? Uh... I was just going to ask, do you have any idea once they do get the materials, how long of a project this, how long it will take? It's hard to say. Uh, this is a smaller contractor, so it's not like he'll have a big crew of folks in there. So he may do sections at a time, okay. and uh, it may be a month for him. It may be quicker. I, I can't really speak for him. And from what I remember about the other replacements, he was kind of doing it piecemeal, but it was always available to be used, right? Whatever yes. he was, yeah. whatever the new stuff was, you could still walk on the old stuff. Right. He whatever he took out, he took out enough that he could replace it. And if something happened and he couldn't come right back, it was still available. Yeah, to use. that was wonderful. I experienced that with all of those redeckings, and I thought they did a great job. Yep. So I just received a message that um, the materials. Um, he can start immediately, but he's getting materials from Shore Lumber. Oh, fabulous. So that's a fine local. Job local. <laughs> is, he, is he watching us on TV right now? He knows what's happening? Mike Whitehill is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mike. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> uh, does somebody want to make a motion to approve? That's so moved. I All right. second. We have a motion and a second to approve uh, Living Ecosystems as recommended by, uh, by the staff for a, a bid, uh, a budget not to exceed $19,749.56, and this is grant funded. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Thank you. Uh, next, we have a one-year extension for the farm lease. Kip, is that going to be you as well? Yep. Okay. All right. Our uh, border reuse farm at uh, 751 Hope Road, uh, 
we have a farmer that has rented for the past three years to till the tillable acres out there. Uh, when, normally when we put it out to bids and do a contract for it, it's a one year term with the ability to renew for two more years after that. He's had the farm for three years now running. We were gonna put it back out to bids. He asked if he could have one more year added to the term. Uh, he would like to till it one more year at the, the rate that he's paying. Um, with uh, what he's paying us for, uh, we're recommending that we extend his contract one more year. And that'll buy us some time and then you could do a bid package out for next year. Correct. Okay. Anybody have any questions? No, I took a look at the current lease that we have, and I, I, the, the rates are certainly competitive in terms of the cash rent for irrigated ground. So uh, I'd, I'd make, certainly agree, make a motion that we extend this for, you know, for a year. Well, uh, one, one more thing, just to show that uh, it's a very it advantageous to us, the town, as Kip, when we uh, reviewed the facility, he works, it, trying to get a farmer to work with you uh, because it's not just, uh, you know, the equipment out there, but uh, as we use the spray fields, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. It, the, the spray field is our source of uh, getting rid of and recycling the treated wastewater. Uh, the farmer understands and our discharge permit for the farm is part of the rental agreement and they understand that that is our number one priority is to irrigate and reuse that water. So if there's a time that he wants to come in and plant and we're a little against the gun and we need to get more water sprayed, he'll work with us and give us a few more days or something before we stop spraying mm -hmm. to allow him to come in and vice versa when it's time to uh, Which I for think him is to very advantageous and it's like Tim says, it would give you a better an extension to do a good bid package, mm -hmm. correct? Correct. Yep. All right, so we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion to approve the staff request for a one-year extension and a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. To all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Thanks, Kip. Thank you. Uh, next, we have item C, resolution 12-2020. Uh, I'll, I'll actually read the top of that, uh, Resolution 12-2020, Resolution of the Town Council of Centerville for the purpose of amending the town charter to increase the number of members of the Board of Supervisors of Elections and, terms, and term and matters generally related thereto. I brought this up at last meeting during our uh, council roundtable. Uh, I, I believe that uh, we should increase our number of Board of, of uh, Supervisors of Elections from three to five. We've got uh, considerable hours that we now run an election. There's a lot of people that are coming in to vote. And I think that just having a couple of extra volunteers uh, would help if somebody can't make it and just more hands make the, uh, make the, make the work uh, a little bit easier. In addition, I made a change to allow for the, um, the, the appointments to, to come in April, which would coincide with the rest of the appointments that we make uh, for the council. Um, I've asked actually Sharon to come tonight. Maybe uh, Sharon, you can kind of talk a little bit about how the charter change process works, right? So tonight being the introduction of the resolution. Sure. So uh, a charter change is one of the most significant things that you, you do. So there is a little bit more process maybe than some of the um, legislation that you pass. Before you pass the charter resolution, you have to have a public hearing and you have to give at least 21 days advance notice of the public hearing. And then after you pass the charter amendment, there's significant notice requirements afterwards. There's posting and four separate advertisements in the newspaper, um, all that have to happen within 40 days after it's passed. If there is no referendum filed, it becomes effective on the 50th day after it's passed. Um, it's very rare to have a referendum, but if there were, then it would go uh, on the ballot as an initiative if it had significant uh, referendum, the, the su sufficient amount of votes or, or people in the petition to cause it to go to referendum. Um, I don't know that you've had one of those, or at least not that I'm aware of. Um, so anyway, that is the process. Um, happy to answer any questions that you have. 
So if we, if we kind of introduce it tonight, we could set up a public hearing for our meeting in December. Uh, that's at least 21 days from now. So, and, and we typically do public hearings starting at 7.05 p.m. During a, during a regular meeting. Uh, okay, yep. Anybody have any questions about what we're looking to do here? No. More opportunities for volunteers. No, and I, I agree with you with the early voting that uh, it kind of stretched Carolyn and the Board of Elections uh, with the two extra days. And I, I think more hands, the better. Yep. Okay, all right, so we'll put this on for a public hearing and then we can uh, consider it uh, that night as well. And then it will be, you know, 50 days or so after that. So it will work out for early, early uh, spring. Uh, next, we have ordinance 04 2020 lot line adjustment administrative decision first reading. Uh, I can read the, the top of that as well. Town Council of Centerville ordinance number 04 2020 an ordinance to amend section 138-5 of the town code for the purpose of establishing regulations for lot line adjustments and administrative lot line adjustments. I'll submit the rest for the record. I don't know if Steve or Sharon, if you wanted to go into, go into this. I think this is trying to make things a little bit more business and public friendly. Um, you know, going to the public, to the planning commission is an extra level of work for an applicant. And so there are some things that are pretty simple. They're just changing a boundary line between two lots. And so that would be an administrative lot line adjustment. And so this ordinance will allow that to be approved at the staff level rather than requiring them to go to the planning commission. Okay. Uh, what's the process for this, Sharon? Does this, this uh, as a text amendment, it would typically, if it's 170, it goes before the planning commission. This does not because it's uh, subdivision uh, regulations, right? It is the subdivision regulations. Um, you know, if it's not supposed to go to the planning commission, it probably should anyway, just because it does involve what they, you know, their realm of okay. what they approve and not approve. So if we could have them look at it in the December meeting, and then we could have a, uh, a second reading and, and a public hearing if we need, I mean, we could have a public hearing if we need to uh, that, that night as well. Does that work? All right, council members, any questions? No? All right. Um, at last meeting as well during our council roundtable, I had mentioned uh, putting together a text amendment for an ordinance to allow for museums in the R2 zone. I, I did not actually present it tonight because as we started getting into it, uh, there's, there's a couple of um, maybe additions that we need to have, have put on there. And so that uh, Chris Jakubiak, our town planner, is working through that and Sharon's working through that as well. But Sharon, could you explain a little bit about how the text amendment to the zoning code works because it's a little different than regular ordinances. Sure, and that one is required to right. be referred to the planning commission. So once you get a draft and you introduce it potentially at your next meeting, then you would refer it to the planning commission probably for their January meeting. And then the council is required to have a public hearing and that is required to be um, advertised at least twice within with the first ad at least 15 days prior to the hearing. So okay. there is a little bit of lead time for that public for the public hearing for that. All right. Very good. And, and so, so in, in each of those, I mean, the public would have an opportunity to, to speak at the planning commission. They'd have an opportunity to speak during a regular council meeting, and they'd also have an opportunity to speak during a, the official public hearing. Yeah, and they can also submit written comments. All right, that's everything that I have for uh, new business. Uh, we've got one correspondence about a banner. Uh, Steve, I don't think there's any action needed on that. Okay. Um, next, we have reports of boards and commissions. Uh, Centerville Park Advisory Board, Shelby, do you have anything to report? Um, one main thing to report right now is that we are decorating the town for the holidays this Sunday, uh, November 22nd, and we are looking for volunteers. So anyone who is interested to come and help out, uh, meet at the town hall at noon on Sunday the 22nd, um, and we will be decorating the town square, uh, Millstream Park, and then, if we can, even uh, the wharf. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, and we just we just uh, appointed three of, new members, right? Of course, yes. <laughs> and we just appointed three new members to uh, the Parks Advisory Board, which is very exciting. And they will uh, hopefully start in our December meeting. And if anybody else is interested in being on the Parks Board, they can certainly put their name in as well. Oh, yes, please. Anyone is welcome. Great. Okay. So uh, how, many, how many members does that bring the Parks Advisory Board up to? Um, let me Six, see. I think, I, now, right? I believe, yeah. I think seven. Seven, excuse me, with, yeah, seven. 
Yeah. And that would be Rick, Rich, Rich, Ryan, Mike, Ryan, Priscilla, Priscilla and Sandy. Sandy. Oh, and Mike. And Mike Whitehill, yeah. So I, now we've yeah, got seven. seven. Okay, yeah. thank you. Uh, next, we've got Centerville Economic Development Authority, Steve Klein. Do you have anything uh, to report there? Uh, I don't think I do. I thought we got a good yep. presentation from them just a few minutes ago. Okay. Uh, Queen Anne's Council, Queen Anne's County Council of Governments, uh, Jeff Keel, he's not here tonight. They, they push their meeting out, I think, until December. Is that right? No, they oh. don't typically meet in December. So um, as long as everything is well with the world, um, January will be the next meeting. Okay, perfect. And the Centerville Planning Commission, the, the Planning Commission had no agenda. They did not meet this month. So they're we're looking forward to having um, the YMCA do a, a presentation at, at the next meeting. Uh, next report of department heads, town manager. Oh, excuse me, before we move on. Uh, I did actually want to um, informally appoint Bob Hardy as the liaison to the MML. Um, MML is a huge resource for the town. We've been members for a long time. Um, in fact, I think we might have been one of the charter members way back when. But it's an opportunity for, for Bob to get involved and, and really kind of uh, help not reinvent the wheel, but get information from MML. And there's a lot of opportunity for him to uh, report back in the town, help us out with everything from economic development to uh, you know, Main Street and, and whatnot. Uh, and the, the bonuses at the uh, annual convention, you get to, you get to carry the flag. Uh, carry the town flag and present it in front of all the municipalities. So, uh, thank you for being willing to. Is that to do a paid that. vacation? That is a paid vacation. <laughs> oh. It's like virtual for a little while. <laughs> yeah, it was virtual this past year. Oh darn it! it I'll tell you, the, the annual MML convention. It is a fantastic resource for everybody. Whether you're on the staff, whether you're a police chief, you know, town manager, public works, council. I have learned a ton uh, every year, and and it's. It's so great to go down there and be with other municipal elected leaders. A lot of people who, you know, oh, this is the this is all you see, but then you get to, to meet so many other people who are in the same position. So yeah, and it's a, a little turning on the back page. It's right there in Annapolis, the headquarters. Correct. So and and Scott Hancock, who is the executive director, he was the first. He got his he got his first job, and that was our our first town manager the town of Centerville ever had. So oh, cool. Yeah, he's a great guy and. He when is. you do have a chance to meet him, uh, he's got some great stories to tell as well. Oh, I'm sure he does. <laughs> well, thank you for being willing to do that. Let's move on to uh, board, uh, excuse me, reporter department heads, town manager. Yeah, the finance office uh, has been working uh, on the audit and some early uh, yeah. uh, budget preparation. Um, also have continued uh, you know, working with the transition with uh, the new uh, council members and uh, you know, working on the you know, typical uh, permits and uh, zoning matters. All right, Chief. Good evening, council members. Uh, so just briefly, I wanted to bring to the council's attention that the Queen Anne's County Health Department has implemented um, COVID testing two, two days a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays currently with no appointment necessary. Uh, beginning the first week of December, they're gonna increase that, uh, those occurrences to three times a week no appointment necessary. Um, I anticipate, having been out there on Tuesday and Thursday directing traffic, um, there has been a influx of vehicular traffic into the town. As you're aware, the health department backs up to Banjo Lane, uh, and there's not a lot of infrastructure there to allow for people getting to work and accessing the health department for other reasons. So um, I anticipate a, uh, an influx of vehicular traffic uh, with it going to three days a week, particularly after Thanksgiving, uh, where many businesses will require their employees to mandatory test for COVID prior to returning to work uh, after holiday travel. Uh, that being said, I would just ask that, our, uh, that the motorists that are coming in, uh, please be mindful uh, not to block businesses or residential driveways, uh, and to also be patient with our law enforcement officers that will be out there helping to assist them to the testing location. Um, the parking or the line for the uh, COVID testing will extend from the Department of Health on Banjo Lane. And we're putting that overflow line back on Happy Lady Lane, which runs parallel to the town parking lot and post office. Uh, and again, just to, to be patient, um, I don't think anyone has sat there for longer than maybe 15 or 20 minutes. Um, but we usually have two officers out there to help direct traffic. Uh, and again, we just ask to, um, to please be mindful not to block a, a, a 
residential driveway or business. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. And we have any questions? No. Uh, next, we're going to go town attorney. Sharon, do you have anything? No. Nope. Okay. Director of Public Works, Kip, do you have anything else to add? Just a few things real quick. Now that the progress season is coming to an end, um, our guys have been busy getting many of the other things caught up maintenance as far as some tree trimming, things like that, some issues at the park. Uh, you'll see they got some decorations up already. Yep. You know, we've got the town tree coming next week to put up in the uh, front of the courthouse, the old courthouse. So things are going along pretty good. We were able to do some uh, line striping today with a contractor. We got a lot of things freshened up here in the middle of town, plus some other things that have been looming out there for a while we wanted to get done. So it all went real good. Some help from the police department. So thank you for the chief. They just happened to be doing traffic detail for the COVID, which happened to work good for us too. That's so. great. <laughs> I have one question. Sure. Uh, I put out, uh, I was tasked to look into kayak rack and so I put a word out and one of the comments that came back was that the kayak rack was in or the kayak launch was in need of repair. Well, I did a on-site visit and uh, you might want to put into the plan for the spring. The rollers on the launch look a little worn and uh, that that might be something you want to plan for next spring for next uh, you know yeah. the next year yeah and there's uh the i don't know if you knew that or not but i just thought i'd bring it up yeah there's two rollers that are missing but they're the top two yeah that um, i i was talking with chris the outfitter he said that's so people can stand there and right. launch their boat right. but it's the other ones that if you look there is uh they just need probably to look at and to see they might need replacement or whatever needs to be done Yep. for uh let's put it this way safe launch of a kayak mm -hmm. sure okay. not a problem great thanks kip thank you uh next moving along town clerk um i have two things that i wanted to talk about um the first is um you, the council saw probably in this week's uh check run that we are um presenting a check to the cutting room for a facade improvement um, grant that they receive for $15,000. Um, so we are trying to set up a photo op. If um, you guys can let me know your availability next week um, and we'll get the paper to come in and um, do a photo and get a little press on the cutting room. So um, I'm generally available. So pick a time and I can be there. Likewise. Yeah. yeah. Same. Okay. Um, and then real quick today, um, Centerville Main Street submitted a uh, $266,504 grant um, to DHCD, Department of Housing and Community Development, Maryland Strong Economic Recovery Initiative. Um, the state's 32 other main streets and Baltimore City's eight main streets will complete a compete for a $5 million pool of funds. Um, the grant restricted use of the funds for two purposes. 85% of the funds must be used for direct financial support to assist businesses in the Main Street area, and no more than 15% can be used for operating support to the Main Street office to implement the grant and to execute marketing projects or other programs that provide indirect support to our businesses. So. Um, our grant requested funds to create a micro grant program and to launch a community e gift card program with bonus cards and waived fees for shoppers. And uh, we're hopeful to hear back about the grant by the end of this month. Okay. So this is part of the uh, rainy day fund that the governor um, sent out. So and in this you'll hear is back by the end of the end of November. End wow, of November, that's a quick yes. Turnaround. So they are due tomorrow at uh, 4 p.m. Carol got it in today, um, the, this evening, um, right before the meeting started, actually. She um, submitted. I'm so. sure, due to the short uh, time frame, you didn't get it into our packet. 
the e the email or what it what she just talked about. I would have. No, I, that's not in our packet. That she's just providing an update. No, I'm just. No, I'm update. just. I'm oh. just asking. Could you provide me that information in an email then, so I could just have it sure. for my yeah, own. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, information. I think Carol sent out an email um, when we first got word of it. We didn't know the details of it yet of how we were going to. Okay, put it well, together. that probably and, was um, maybe before we got on board. So I would have, you know. And uh, yeah, knowledge is uh, uh, yeah, so awesome. I can support it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, so yeah, we were working on some last minute details this week, and um, so good. it is only open to Main Street um, businesses within our Main Street area, designated Main Street area. So, um, and then any other business, the county did receive funds, so um, those are available to other businesses outside. Do you have any update on the poll that you took regarding the volunteer dinner? I do. Um, I am going to say it's about 60% um, not in favor of attending and 40% um, they were fine with attending. Okay. So I, We don't need to decide tonight, but I think that, that that's a big number that's not interested and I, everything we're hearing is just not good, right? So I, I love the volunteer dinner and it's so important. Maybe we just do something a little different, right? Maybe and we can push back to lot the spring. Of, a lot of people suggested waiting till the springtime and see if we, you know, if some of... We could do it outside then. We could do it outside or if a lot of the restrictions are lifted by then. Um, they, uh, they lo everyone loves the dinner. They love getting together. They love seeing everybody, but they would prefer it be another, another time. So... As of now, the last meeting, we had a motion to hold it on that date in January. Um, I don't think we have to make a decision tonight, but I think that's something we're gonna wanna kind of revisit and, and make a decision on next meeting. Are you guys okay with that? Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right, I have one more question. Yeah. Um, you sent, uh, or Karen sent out about CARES Act funding. Um, and she was mentioning that uh, she was putting together a list. Uh, uh, does she do you have or she prepared that list that was going forward yeah but, we uh, have the list yeah. what we have the yeah we have the list that was um submitted to the county okay next beat is can i see the list again for information purposes yeah. i mean yeah, of course you know mm -hmm. uh, i would just be interested to know that um, you know people will ask you know oh the county got all this money how is the town tapping into it? And I'd like to be able to, you know, it's always good to tell people, of course. you know, that, hey, we're up to speed, we're doing this, and we're getting, uh, you know, uh, additional yeah, if funds. I, if, I, if I could add, I mean, some of these things you're requesting, they just happen. So we just haven't had a chance to circulate oh, information. Hey, I, I, I understand, Steve. Oh. I, so I, I got my email. I was, I'm interested in it. Um, Especially, I've heard people, they, they love George and QAC TV, uh, but, uh, you know, there's also an interest in having Zoom meetings since uh, we're limited to the number of people that can be physically here. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the other things I've heard about that. And as uh, Karen put in here, cost of a Zoom is 150 per meeting for additional QAC TV staff. So I was just wondering. 200 for Zoom. Yeah, and, and, and I think uh, we're working with the county on that, or since we work with QACDV with the county. Well, that would be the council's decision to move forward with a Zoom or not to move forward with Zoom, whichever. It's not in our budget to do Zoom. No, no, I understand. Yeah. But it, it was mentioned that uh, Karen said to Steve that, uh, you know, there is this CARES funding that we possibly... It, it only goes to December 31st, so right. it would only affect one meeting, uh, okay. the one meeting in December that we've got. All right, all right. Yeah, so, it wouldn't cover the meetings January and February. No, no. Yeah. So, uh, it, Unless new funding came I'm out. I'm just clarifying where we stand on this is what I'm saying. Right. And that is what you're saying, Carolyn. Um, I just want to make sure I understand that going forward, into 2021, we don't have it in the current budget for Zoom meetings. For Zoom meetings, correct. 
We have the QAC TV is in the budget for yes. this okay. um, fiscal year, but not the Zoom meetings. And one of the things we're going to be talking about in the December meeting, I think, is kind of the revisit, right? When we when we struck the budget this year, we basically pulled everything out and said, we'll revisit it in, in end of the year, December, something like that. So that could be one of those items that we could you know, talk about uh, yeah. further going, going forward. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Carolyn, for uh, clarifying that for me. Because Karen sent it out and she isn't here, so I didn't know who else to ask. Okay. <laughs> Anything you. else? No? Thank you. All right, next we're going to move on to our second citizens forum. I don't see any citizens here, but I will ask again if there's any citizens that want to make a, a comment. Hearing none, we're going to move on to the council roundtable. Uh, Shelby, do you have anything you want to add? Um, no, I, you, everything's been gone over. I'm good. Good. Okay. Bob? Uh, yes, uh, I had a wonderful meeting with uh, Chief Cybrey, and it looks like we're going to do a, oh, if you want to call it a pilot program of uh, bike patrol in Symphony Village. <laughs> That's great. Uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, residents in Symphony Village that bike uh, almost daily. Uh, there's, in fact, some women that I call them the trike brigade because they have tricycles. And uh, Chief and I were talking about it, and I think uh, he's already approached an officer, LaBelle, and I've reached out to the community, and probably uh, to get everything coordinated would be sometime in, in the January time frame. So uh, I think Chief came up with that idea as we were talking about uh, the situation. And it would be uh, police outreach uh, to the community, uh, more or less uh, meet, the, meet the police. And also uh, a, uh, another uh, benefit of it would be if the you know, citizens see something you know, that is, concerns them. And that uh, I thought about this as Chief uh, sent emails around that uh, the other area would be possibly Northbrook because it's such a large community. And, you know, uh, you, I don't want to say there's things that could happen there, but, uh, you know, uh, that we need to make sure our police are aware to keep our citizens safe. Um, I mentioned earlier that uh, our uh, Millstream trail park was very in very good shape and i think uh, we need to I, I i think steve just mentioned it tonight was we need to promote that because it is a wonderful um, asset to the town and uh, also well, you, you run into people and there was a couple of uh, individuals playing basketball down at mill Street. And uh, I, as a child, I used to play on the asphalt in the city. Uh, we might want to consider uh, to hopefully utilize that more, that uh, we can plan to maybe restripe the court so it looks a little bit more like a basketball court. And also uh, to encourage people to come uh, to get some new nets. I mean, it's ragged, and I know it's the winter, but... Uh, you know, maybe uh, plan for the spring, you know, um, spruce it up a bit. And I don't know what plans uh, Kip and his people have for Millstream or the Park Advisory Board. They, uh, I'll just say it's a little muddy down there. Would that be appropriately uh, to describe some of the areas there? That's a very good way to describe <laughs> it. Yeah. Especially right now. With as high as the water table is, there's nothing we can do about it. We put there are drains in under a good portion of that park. Right. The problem is that the water table is so high, yeah. there's no place to get it to run to that's not already overflowing. So. Yeah. And I'm sure possibly some new uh, crushed rock or something on the road, and, and you know, just a, I don't know, just a little sprucing it up for the community. I think would be very if we can plan it. By doing that, we're going to push all the water into the parking area. No, no, I understand. Yeah, I mean, um, we we keep it graded as best we can. This is just an odd season. For yeah, no, I understand. I just thought I'd bring this out in that I, you know. Can't hear you. And the other uh, item I got a feedback was, 
and this pertains to the wharf where we're going to be replacing uh, wood on the boardwalk and uh, the comment came back well I know we got a grant to put a lot of good stuff down there like the picnic tables the pavilion the gazebo and other things but this individual said we need benches on the boardwalk facing the water for bird watching I know uh, along the trail there are different places but here there right there at the wharf maybe one or two benches could be factored into our plans is what I'm hearing and Kip you might want to speak to that could you come up here because I know we've got some picnic tables and stuff yeah I, I know but I'm just saying as I said the grass season's coming to an end today that was one of their projects they took benches down to to mount on the um, the little fishing knocks oh, that are great. there. So I can um, drop a note. She happens to be a, a neighbor of mine in Symphony Village. Good It'd government very, work. So, boy, you're a man on, right on it. Well, we've got an awful big list and it's, <laughs> this season is on, <laughs> not much gets done on the list. So it's been on the list for quite a while. Well, you'll but, please one of my vote constituents that voted for us. <laughs> Yep, so, and we Thank know you, get, they have to come back up again to do the uh, the decking. Yeah. It'll be taken care of. It's Good. not a problem. So. Yeah. Thanks, Kip. Yep. Thank, Thank you, Kip. Yep. Anything else? Uh, let me see. Da, 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 da. No. Uh, All right. Thank doing you for a walkabout, so getting out and looking. Steve, do you have anything? Yeah, just real briefly. I know uh, the Planning Commission and, and Chris Jakubiak is thinking about uh, auxiliary buildings and the amount of space that they take up on uh, town residential lots and I just want to say that I look forward to the outcome of that consideration you know we've got some buildings in Centerville Heights where I live and other places around town that where you know folks are building these garages that are really uh, not within the residential character of of the community and I think these things go up from time to time and, and I think that obviously the town is permitting I'm not suggesting any anyone's doing anything illegal or untoward but from the sake of appearances they're really changing the character of some of these uh, some of these properties so I, uh, I look forward to what the Planning Commission does uh, on that issue and then I just wanted to say uh, thank you to Steve Walls and to Kip for uh, the tour of the wastewater and, and uh, drinking water infrastructure that was a very educational afternoon so I just wanted to say thank you for that a couple couple Fridays ago it was um, uh, I love that kind of stuff kind of geek out on seeing how things like that work so thank you very much for that appreciate it yeah I thank you also that was uh, very informative and it's like I put a note out on resident Centerville that I did that and I said people don't realize what goes into getting water from the tap and flushing your toilet. It was fantastic. Thank you, both of you. And, and we've taken some, some kids on tours up there, and you know, as long as you get them to stand back far enough, it, it's an interesting thing. So I'm sure that Kip, you'd probably be willing to, to do that in the future as well. I, have, uh, I just have one thing. This summer, uh, when, when, one, when our, one of our council members resigned, we found a, kind of a quirky thing in the charter uh, which required us to either have the council members stay on for a little bit longer or make a charter change. And, and ultimately, we decided to have the council members stay on for a little bit longer, uh, but we wanted to revisit uh, changing the charter. Basically, the charter says that if there's a vacancy and the vacancy is longer than a six month term, the council must have a special election between 60 and 90 days. It just so happened that this summer with that happening, we would have had to have two elections right next to each other. And so one of the things that, that I think we want to investigate is modifying that. Uh, and I think it'd be relatively simple, and I'm going to actually have Sharon kind of explain through how a resolution, how a charter change resolution would work to fix this. Yeah, so, you know, with it being based on how long the term is, it doesn't take into account how close it might be to an election. And what we would have run into this summer is if we, we would have had to have an election around August or September and the people that ran for that election, it would have been past the deadline to run for the October election. So you wouldn't know the results of the one and then you would have had to make a decision on one versus the other. And so the thought is to have it based 
I mean, you could still keep the concept of an appointment if it's less than six months or an election if it's more than it, but have it also based on the length of time till the election of whether it needs to be a special election or whether it can just wait until the general election. Right. Okay. And so I'll look to put a resolution together to, to kind of flesh that out and then we can have a discussion on, you know, how it, how it makes the most sense to go forward with that. Um, yeah, and, and I think that if it was going to be a little bit longer, now that we've got five council members, if there's one seat open, it's not as big of an impact as if you only have two right. or three council members. Okay. You mentioned an appointment. Uh, you're, so so if, it's, if there's less than six months left in the term, it's an appointment. Who makes the appointment? Council. Council. So a legislative body makes an appointment to fill a legislative seat? Yeah, if the term is less than six months. So it's a very short-term fix until an election. You might not need that at all, like you say, with a council of five. If one seat's open for six months, that's not the end of the world. So maybe you just wait for an election regardless of the length. But. And that may be something we might want to change as well, right? I mean, it, yeah. it, it's never happened in the time that I've been here, but I know it happened a couple of years before, before my time. Uh, and yeah, I mean, then you have two council members who have to agree upon, now it's gonna be, you know, there's, there's four council members, so it's a little bit easier. But again, I think the impact of having five is not as great as when you had two or three. So we'll, we'll look to revisit that and we can have a further discussion in December on that. I don't have anything else. Uh, I'll accept the motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thanks everybody.